Let's get to our panel right now. Joining us from London via Skype, Omar Wakaf is the founder and director of Gnosos, a think tank focusing on Syria. With us in the studio, Mohammed Ghanem is the senior political advisor for the Syrian American Council. From London, we're joined by Alexander Nekrasov. He is a former advisor to the Russian government. And from Oklahoma, Joshua Landis is director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Oklahoma. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Let's start with uh, Omar in London. Uh, Omar, this is the first attack, we are told, by United States forces against the Syrian government. Uh, how does this change the war, if at all? It will change the war a little bit, uh, but let me remind you that this is not the first attack. The first attack actually happened a few months ago uh, in Deir ez-Zor. The United States said it wasn't deliberate. The Syrian um, the Syrians and the Russians said, no, actually it was, because, you know, there was all sorts of reconnaissance and aid, what have you. But the problem is that this one is less planned than the other one. You could argue that the one in Deir Zor may have come to weaken the Syrian army's position over there, let it run by ISIS. Um, in a sense, there are all sorts of possibilities. But this one, it seems that someone has forced uh, President Trump's hand um, the issue we have now is that the American administration, the West in general, um, they can see some sort of an opportunity. It's not clear to them yet what or how they're going to benefit from it. And they're trying to, um, you know, increase rhetoric, threatening and say, you know, we're going to continue with this uh, so that probably in the hope that they get, get concessions from the other side, um, but there doesn't seem to be a coherent strategy in mind yet. However, um, if we look at the Syrian uh, crisis in the you know, past at least year or so, or at least since the Russian uh, intervention, uh, there has been some sort of an equilibrium, so to speak, on the ground. The Russians have been doing the, their own thing, the Americans have been doing their own thing, and there hasn't been much conflict. Uh, they're, so to speak, gliding alongside each other. Now, the chances are that there might be some sort of a confrontation, um, or at least the risks are higher now for a confrontation, which will change the dynamic. It may lead to, a, you know, worsening of the situation, but equally it could lead uh, both parties to, you know, sit with each other and say, well, OK, this is getting serious. Let's see how we could collaborate more. OK, Mohammed, I want to get your view on the attack and the consequences of the attack. But first, let's take a listen to uh, what some Syrians are saying about that attack. Let's watch. God willing, the balance of power will change. But we ask God and the international community to also impose an air embargo so the balance of power can truly change on the ground. Because the planes have really been hard on us. On the ground, there's the regime, Russia, Iran, and the party of the devil. But we can crush them. All we need is an air embargo. Follow this strike on the airbase. God bless the Americans. So does the strike in any way change the balance of power? Um, I, think, I think the strike was a very powerful message that President Trump sent. And, it is, and what you need to know, what you viewers need to know, is that this was the first time since 1971 that anyone, just anyone, had held the Assad family to account. This is, so that's major, mm -hmm. that's number one. Uh, number two, the strike wasn't symbolic. 20%, according to the, the American Department of Defense, 20% of Assad's operational aircraft uh, were destroyed. And a very important base was almost entirely destroyed. Um, so this is not a symbolic strike. It is definitely a game changer. Because, again, this is the first time since 1971 that anyone had stood up to the Assad regime. Uh, you say sent a message to Assad. What was the message? The message uh, that was sent by President Trump and yeah. echoed by Secretary Tillerson, right. Ambassador Nikki Haley, uh, uh, National Security Advisor McMaster, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, we, we have our own red lines. This new administration has its own red lines. And you've crossed some of these red lines, and we're going to hold you to account. Tillerson this morning said... Uh, the United States rededicates itself right. to uh, defending innocent civilians around the world. Okay, let me go to Alexander Nekrasov. He's in London. Alexander, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has denounced the strike. Let's listen to what he had to say. It's upsetting because it harms the already difficult relations between Russia and the United States. But I hope that these provocations will not lead to non-reversible results. So Russia, of course, has forces in Syria. Uh, what would the response be from Moscow to what has happened? 
Well, to be honest with you, I think that this uh, missile strike did not change the situation on the ground, but it created more confusion around the whole Syrian crisis. I think that the American administration is sending all sorts of different signals which are confusing. There are suspicions that uh, Trump and his people have used this strike for domestic purposes <coughs> to boost the president's uh, popularity and to reject the accusations by his critics that he is uh, very close to Putin and Russia. Uh, I think that the main uh, point of this whole situation will be developed in, in Moscow when Rex Tillerson flies there. I think that is when they are going to talk in earnest, and that's when they are going to discuss what is to be done. I agree with that there is a dangerous situation at the moment, but I think the Americans realize that, that, that they can't just simply do whatever they want like it, they did in Iraq and Libya, because Russia is present there. Russia is on the ground there. You can't ignore the presence of Russia. And I think the Americans also have to understand that China has always been supporting Russia when it came to Syria. Maybe sometimes it wasn't that obvious, but uh, Ch the Ch China has always been on the side of reason, let's put it this way. So the two powerful nations are against an aggression, they're against this crisis developing into a regional war. So America and its <coughs> allies will have to uh, keep this in mind. OK, let's bring in Joshua Landis. Joshua, uh, there are very mixed reports on the impact and consequences of this airstrike. Uh, and there are even reports that between 9 and 12 civilians were killed uh, in the airstrikes. In your view, what was the point of the strike? Well, it's clearly as a deterrent, and that's what uh, Tillerson said. This is a, upholding the Obama doctrine, which is no using chemical weapons. I think that Trump was embarrassed. He wanted to focus solely on ISIS, which has his, been his uh, campaign speech. He believes in strongmen. He, he, the trouble is, is that his strongman, which would be Assad in this case, uh, broke an American doctrine that was laid down by the previous president. And the Republicans had bombarded Obama for being weak. So he couldn't not do anything and allow chemical weapons to be used. He was put into a position where he had to do something. He's done it. He's put out a bit of a confusing message, I think, because he wants to escalate a little bit and scare the Syrians, scare the Russians, to let them know they cannot do this again. But really, Obama wants to get back to the war on ISIS. Oh, I mean, Obama, President Trump does not want to get sucked into the Syrian war. That has been the message from the Americans since the beginning of this war. Obama didn't want to get sucked in, neither does Trump, because should Assad <laughs> fall, who are the strongest militias? Al-Qaeda and ISIS. They are the likely militias that would move into Damascus and take Syria. That's something America does not want. It's been frightened of destroying Assad and regime change <laughs> from the beginning of this war. And, uh, and that's the present situation. I don't think that Trump has an answer to regime change in Syria and doesn't want to contemplate it today. OK, I want to get to the origins of that uh, chemical attack. And there's some controversy over it, if I could put it that way. Uh, let's go to Omar back in London. Omar, the ostensible reason for the United States airstrike was that it was retaliation for uh, that chemical we weapons attack in Idlib. Uh, Washington blames Bashar al-Assad's forces for that attack. But the international community appears to be divided. Let's take a listen to what uh, the UN representative in Syria had to say. This treacherous act of aggression is a great violation of the Charter of the United Nations, as well as all international norms and laws. The United States has attempted to justify it with empty pretexts, fabricated arguments claiming that the Syrian Arab army had used chemical weapons in Khan Shikoun without genuine knowledge of what happened, without identifying who was responsible. Uh, that was the uh, Syrian delegate to the UN there. So, Omar, what, who does the government think was responsible for this? Well, if I could bring you the... Well, the government officially says someone is, is, is trying to, um, you know, uh, bring things to a head between us and the United States. But if I could bring you the opinion of, of ordinary Syrians who support the government, and there are quite a few of them, 
Uh, for them, you know, for the past 18 months, for example, the, the Syrian government's position has been steadily improving since the Russian intervention, diplomatically, militarily, and so on. You know, the Syrian army is advancing on quite a few fronts. They are repelling uh, major attacks, concentrated attacks, more easily now. Um, there are talks with the uh, rebels now in Astana, there are talks in Geneva, and there is a bit of a momentum, momentum around that. Even the United States themselves now, they're saying, you know, along with the British and other Western, you know, powers, they're saying, you know, President Assad could stay, um, at least for the foreseeable future, it's not our issue, it's for the Syrians to decide and so on. So why pick up a fight with the international community? Why bring the, rash of, uh, the wrath of the international community? It doesn't make sense at all. Um, obviously, for those who oppose the Syrian government, it may fall within a, a certain framework. You know, this guy enjoys killing people, enjoys... But, you know, the Syrian government is a calculative um, sort of player, and, and, you know, it doesn't make sense at all. So, um, at least we know that someone wanted the United States to behave this way because the issue always has been has always been since the Oba uh, sorry Trump uh, inauguration and actually before since uh, you know the start of his um, election campaign he was always saying you know if I were in Obama's shoes I would have done blah 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 um, and okay. in a sense once you declare certain the red lines you hold yourself hostage so someone wanted President Trump to do this, and now, you know, we're, we're waiting to see what happens.